Okay, what I'd like to go ahead and show you with the Aikido uh, before you even get into techniques is that we already uh, recovered the falling and we're going to go ahead with what we call ukeme. Now I'm going to go ahead and give you the very unique wrist stretching exercises of Aikido. There's four basic ones and I'm going to have my assistant, Mr. Scott Sobel, I guess you must come on out and show you. He's going to sit in this one of the sitting positions. I think we have we, we definitely want to make sure, even though if I might have said it many times, and I say it many times in, in, in my classes, you can't get enough on how to properly sit in Seiza. Seiza is uh, you, you definitely have to have the toes together in the back. You like to have the weight of your, your sit bones on your heels and keep your back straight, shoulders relaxed, hands on the lat, and the knees no further than two of your own personal fist width width apart, two, maybe two and a half, okay? So with that in mind, we're going to start stop. Okay, now we're going to take a look at some of the very unique wrist stretching exercises of Aikido and some of the body movement exercises of Aikido. I'm going to have some help with my assistant, Mr. Scott Sobel. Okay, I'm going to have Scott stand on this one, all right? And he's going to go ahead and go through the basic wrist stretches, and I'll go ahead and give you Japanese terminology. And then we're going to go ahead and talk you through what we're trying to look for with these wrist stretches. So it's not just some mindless motion that you're doing and not getting any benefit. In Aikido, it is extremely important that we not only stretch our muscles, but we stretch and lube up our joints. Uh, since there's probably 50% joint manipulation in Aikido, or throws that manipulate the joint and then throw you, you need to stretch out these joints, especially the wrist, because that is the main key on a lot of Aikido uh, te techniques. What I like to go ahead and do is first introduce, the first wrist stretch we want to introduce is called the Kotegaishi Undo. Kotegaishi Undo, Undo meaning exercise, is the first wrist stretch you're going to go ahead and do. Uh, and what you're going to do is have your, start with your left hand and have your palm face you. The other hand will put the thumb between the ring and pinky knuckle. The rest of the hand will be underneath his thumb. He will now turn it outside, and now he'll bend toward his pinky toward here, and he'll feel a stretching in this area here. And then what I'll have Scott do is maybe hold that for a second and release that. Do that five to ten times, kind of like that, and then your wrist, your wrist stretch for the Kota Gaishi will be there. Now, when you get these things done to you, we start out in Aikido very slow. We want to go ahead and give you a mediocre... Uh, pressure on your joints to have you understand what power this would do to your joints, but we don't want to tear you up. But I can't say that for beginners. So when you're practicing with other people, people get excited, they learn these techniques, and they snap in there. And if you're not stretched out, you're out of Aikido or anything for a couple of weeks. So let's make it very important that before you do any Aikido motion, that you do these wrist stretches. Very important. Take a couple seconds to do it. Okay. So again, we'll start with the right hand. Same thing. Same Kodagaishi or no. Palm facing, he places the ring, the, the, the ring and pinky finger knuckle will have the thumb across it. You have neither of the thumb underneath. Do not want to hold the wrist. If you hold the wrist, you're blocking it. It's no way it can stretch. So make sure that the wrist is open for you to stretch it. Stretch it dead center down. And he'll do this five, four to five times. And that is the Kote Gaishi Ondo. Wrist turnout technique. Or wrist turnout exercise to stretch your wrist. First one we do. Okay, moving on to this, the second one we do. This is called Ikkyo. Ikkyo Undo. First pinning control exercise. Ikkyo Undo is we're going to have an arm. We'll start with the left again. We're going to have the uh, hand flat. And he's been with me so long, I don't even have to describe anything. He just, it's there. It's great. Okay, so now I can, I don't know, basically, why am I here? Okay, so. I train my students so well they can do these tapes, you know. They'll be dojo TV people for the next millennium. All right, now, what we're going to have you do is bring the energy in center. And he will bring his elbow into his, his uh, fingertips, and he'll stretch that. Now, this is the Ikkyo pin. The Ikkyo pin is the first pinning control you learn. When you do this, you don't want to just push your wrist straight back. Scott, if you know Scott, Scott's pulling... He's gently bringing in his elbow with his finger and a nice, nice smooth stretch. And do the other side, Scott. Okay. Like again, I said five 
to 10 times, keep it centered, and you don't want to do it where you don't feel anything. You want to do it where you feel a lot of tingling, a little discomfort, not damaging, but it's only stretching the tendons and the ligaments and the muscles involved to a point where you can exercise and do Aikido, not to the point where you're going to have my hands doing this. If you stretch it too much, it'll be like this. Okay? So I've seen that happen, and that is true. I've seen someone where they've stretched it to the point here so, so hard, and they kept on doing it. When they did the, te the technique was applied on them, it was so, there was nothing, any, anything there, and the guy ended up going from the wrist getting the torque to the elbow getting the torque, and it really, it was a not, not a pretty scene. So let's go ahead and do this safely, moderately, and but it definitely has to be done before any practice of Aikido. Okay, now we're going to move on to the Nikkyo, the Nikkyo Undo, the second pinning control exercise. Now this one is, is a must. And why is this is a must is this is one of the most excruciating, and I'm beginning to be very little melodramatic about that one, excruciating pain on this technique. This technique is one of, the, one of the classic pinning controls of Aikido. It's in other grappling martial arts as well. But the difference between us and them is that we put a little bit more of our energy into it. Not force, but more of breath energy into the Nikkyo. You want to take the hand, thumb up, Tuck the thumb in, wrap around the whole entire hand across the bridge of the knuckles. Now, Mr. Scott will bring his hand in so that we get the Z motion here with the arm. Now he'll turn his pinky toward his nose and do a circular oval type of motion going out and just stretching that. And the key is to push this in tight, push this in tight, and then bring it in, and then, and you'll feel, you'll feel it. But it'd be better if you feel it then than someone laying one on you and you're not stretched because it will go. It will snap like a guitar string. Again, the Nikkyo Undo, second pinion control exercise, the third in our series of stretching for the wrist. Okay, thank you, Mr. Scott. All right, now, the last one that we do, and then we do all our other type of stretching here and there, natural type of stretching. The last one that is a mandatory stretching for a wrist in Aikido is San Kyo Undo. San Kyo Undo, I'm going to have him kind of put the arm up. I'm going to have him a little differently here, just kind of have him dangle this a little bit. And he got the knife edge here of the hand. I'm going to have him put the other one slipping on like a paper clip, all the way tight, and I'm going to have him turn the torque toward him. As he, as he can't torque it anymore, he's now going to extend the arm out. And he'll keep on doing that. Now San Kyo, all right, is one that is used by a lot of law enforcement, a lot of security. It's a great come along. It's a great come along for someone to be a cop you know, that needs to be escorted to a squad car or, or uh, into a jail cell. So I've taught this technique to uh, law enforcement, police, correctional officers. U.S. Marshals, anyone that needs to do any type of apprehending and escorting prisoners, beautiful technique. Why is it a beautiful technique? Because it keeps the people on their feet and you can keep them mobile. And when you stretch this out, the technique uh, is not applied properly. You could probably take a little bit. So what we want to do when we do our wrist stretches, or especially things like Sankyo, is that we want to make sure that we, the person practicing with you your nage, person practicing the technique, or gay person receiving the technique, is lubed up enough so you can put a little bit of torque in there and really not inhibit your energy. The thing with Aikido is these exercises are very important so you can go ahead and not limit to how full tilt we can go. We know there's no equipment except for our geese. There's no safety equipment on us. So we have to go with a mutual cooperation. We also have to use common sense. Lube thy body up, get thyself in shape, okay? And then you will have a, be a better uke for your practitioner that's working with you. The more you guys are in shape, the more you guys work together, the more Aikido can be uninhibited. And with an internal art like Aikido, we do not want any inhibit motion whatsoever. So what I'd like to go ahead and do is uh, go through the four, uh, the four again, and I'll name them, and he'll show them slow and then we'll move on, okay? Our first one again we showed you, 
was Kotagaishi Undo. We'll get a little close up on that if we can. Okay, and I'll go to the other hand and show Ikyo Undo. And notice the pace that he's doing. He's not jerking into it, he's just doing a nice little stretch. And then we'll switch hands and go with Nikyo Undo. And again, switch hands and go to Sankyo Undo. Okay, now what I'm going to do is throw you a little rare one that I picked up in uh, northern Tokyo. Um, it's not rare, it's, it's in Aikido, but this is one called Ude Undo. It's an arm stretch, and basically it's just this. It's, it's, it's to stretch the arm, like hold up like a platter, just come here and just press this, stretch this back, it stretches the elbow, stretches everything. And the good thing about this one is, is that when we work technique like a Hiji Jimmy, an arm bar, it's good to get these elbows and these, these wrist stretch, and we have one in Aikido that we can hang them up here in this place. Oh, that hurts. Okay? So with that, the more you stretch these wrists, the more you keep these joints lubed. It's always it's self-explanatory to keep yourself in shape and keep the muscles lubed up. But the older you get, you know, you're working in aerobics, you're working at muscle tone, you're working at strength, the first thing you lose is flexibility. And not muscle flexibility, joint flexibility. So all you have to do is do it for the common sense of this. We actually keep it, these exercises actually help against carpal tunnel syndrome, any type of bursitis, arthritis in the wrist and in the hands that happen. Do these, do them, don't skimp on them, do them right, and you'll have a good strong wrist. Your wrist will be in shape enough to take the Aikido torque that is required to do these techniques. Okay? Thank you. You, do. Arts, you guys need to come up with the first FX mode. Well, they are. Okay, now we're getting involved into uh, the movement of Aikido. Uh, there's certain different Japanese terminologies for footwork and body movement and all this. I basically work with one terminology. Uh, you know, not everybody wants to learn Japanese language completely. Uh, they just want to learn Aikido. But there happens to be a lot of Japanese terminology used in, in traditional Aikido, uh, which is a good thing because it kind of keeps it pure to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the original country, Japan, that it came from. But it's good for people all over the world to work out, and it's all in one language. It's in Japanese. So what we're going to go ahead and do is get very generic on five movements of, of, of what we're going to call taisabaki, or body movement. Footwork at it with the body movement. And I want to go ahead, and there's, there's a several, you know, a couple dozen different Aiki Taiso exercises, mind-body exercises. Uh, but we're not going to go through all of them. We're just going to go through the ones I feel that were essential to body movement to start the beginner off. So I'm, again, my assistant, Mr. Scott Sobel. Okay, he's going to stand up and be looking at you. The first thing we're going to show, and I'm going to interpret things, and I'm going to do, the, and I'm not, hopefully any... People of Japanese uh, language uh, or Japanese uh, people at all that hear my Japanese, hopefully uh, forgive me if I if I do sound a little off. I'm from Baltimore, so that does a lot. Okay, so what we're going to do is try to pronounce it the best way we can. And if some Aikido practitioners see, hey, we don't call that Tai Sabaki, we do we call it something else. Just look at it as we're getting generic today on body movement. And, uh, and get you started on movement that can go right into the technique. First movement we want to go is learning how to roll the hips into rolling the hips into pinning motions, into getting the the uh, extremity of the attackers make a circular motion with his arm. And the way to do that is not just from extremities. The way to do that is to is to, to roll with your hips. And learn how to roll with these hips. So the first exercise we're going to show you is something called Funakogi Undo, rowing exercise. He's going to step out, and I'm going to have Scott step out into a, just a, you know, a little bit, not so wide, Mr. Scott, just right there, and into like a hanmi, a triangle stance facing this way. And then he's going to have his hands at his hips, and he's going to just let the wrist relax, and he's going to bring them out, 
and he's going to relax the shoulders, and he's going to exhale, and he's going to bring it back into the hips, and then he sees moving his hips. He comes out. Of course, the knee does bend, but the hips do move. And he's going to do this briskly. And he's going to, I'm going to give him a tone. Kind of sound like a little bit like the Wizard of Oz, you know. Hee-ho, hee-ho, I'm going to have him say. But it'll make him breathe out deeply and inhale deeply. Hee-ho, you know, he Oh, you know, and, and, and when you inhale like this, with these exercises, I want him to warm up his hips, flexors, and, and everything here, keep his back straight, and really work on the breathing. Now, I'm going to have him do five of these rowing exercises, funokogi ondo, done like we do them in the beginning of class. Ready? And I'll give Mr. Scott a count. And each. Hit. Knee. Hit. Song. Hit. She. Hit. Angle. Hit. Right, now we'll switch his legs. And I want you to turn the other way, Mr. Scott, so you can give me that it. angle. Okay, very good. And again. Each. Hit. Knee. Hit. Song. Hit. So he did it on his own, and, and he's got that rhythm. What you would do to, in Japan, the founder of Aikido really got into this exercise. He would really throw himself into it. And what it does is it learns you to get this oval roll with your hips using the, the, uh, the knees as like a shock absorber. So when we do things like this with this rowing exercise, you see where it comes from. You know, it's, 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 it's that type of thing where it comes from. Ikkyo, uh, technique would be very well done with a good rowing exercise behind it. The next one we're going to talk to you about is Shomenuchi Kyowundo. Now I'm going to get into all that, what that means, but basically this is going to be a high peri extension exercise. It's going to make him move off the line and enter a little bit. Now there's two motions in Aikido. We either enter and take it right off the line on an angle, or we call a multi or rimi. A multi or a remi is basically the terminology that's been used for an entering uh, in front of motion. And the other motion is called tenkan or ula, which means turning or going around and behind, bringing around uh, circularly. What we're going to go ahead and do is show you right now is the, is the uh, multi version or the remi version or the entering version of a high peri extension. This is for getting off the line and getting to someone and just making one streamlined motion to them. And he's going to play a high parry like he's catching a basketball or something. We're going to go ahead and let him go with the same thing, left leg forwards, and then we're going to go ahead and do the count. I'm going to go do three, but watch what happens here on the first one. And ready? Prepare hands at the side. And each. Okay, now what he's doing, knee, is he's coming up and not blocking, but actually his intent would be to get the guy striking, not down here, but to get him as he's going back. As he's going back. If he pulls back, you enter in and come in, and then we can come up with thousands of techniques of whatever. What we need to do is get off the line. So what I'm going to have Mr. Scott do is show this technique, and he's going to gain a little ground with it. All right, so watch him do just one for me. Each, and the other side, knee. Okay, very good. That is called... High peri extension exercise, Japanese, there's several different names. We call it Shomenuchi Ikkyo window because Shomenuchi Ikkyo technique is, this is a Shomenuchi strike. This is an Ikkyo technique that we're going to do. And as he comes down, I would do this and then do finish the technique into a pin control. So to, as he comes up, this technique teaches you how to, when you move, make the initiative to complete the move and not stutter step into it. Next one we're going to work with is we're going to work with this same high peri extension exercise. And I'm going to have Scott, Mr. Scott stay sideways to you. Now hopefully we can get him dead center, center to you guys where you can see. Now what I have Mr. Scott do is do this peri exercise, but this is to teach you how to pivot your feet. It's called Zengo Window, pivoting exercise. Very important when we throw technique in Aikido, especially throws, especially a lot of throws against multiple attackers. We need to learn how to open our hips to throw the hip behind the power of the, uh, of the throw. Okay? So what we need to do is be open and loose. Now he's going to have to position his feet so he can pivot his hips open on both sides. So we're going to have him start where he's facing right now and Step out whatever leg you wish, Mr. Scott. Now he's high parry. Now he brings it back to his side and then pivots completely and brings it up again. 
and it just slides a little bit to make some ground up there because, and then as he gets more comfortable with his balance and his posture and his footing, he's going to go a little bit more fluid. And I'm going to let him do that on his own without a count. All right, now, very good. He's very, very structured. He's good, comfortable in the shoulders. And now I'm going to ask Mr. Scott to be static. And when I say each or one, he's going to move both of them on the one move. And he's going to show you how we enhance the pivot that way. Step forward. Each! Knee! So. Okay, and this is to be practiced. The better the more you practice it, eventually you'll be able to pivot very quickly and you start here and you bring it down. Okay, and then you can move it together. So eventually, his structure is very correct. And eventually, as you get that down, you understand your body positioning, your balance, and your posture, you'll move quicker. That is called Zengo Window. It's one of the major pivoting exercises. The next exercise I'd like to work with is, and there's more, more to that, is an extension to this even further. And that is called Hoppo Undo, eight directional exercise. We're covering all points of the compass with this exercise. In Aikido, we have multiple attacks. So we have to, instead of frantically just looking and letting them come to us, we can go to the points of the attacker and take it to them and make them jump before they needed to jump. And they're still being the attacker. Just because we get off the line doesn't mean that we're still we're aggressive. What I like to do is have Mr. Scott step his right leg forward, and he's going to do this high parry extension, and he's going to do it in eight different directions. And I'm going to go ahead and count them out. And this front will be his first direction, so that'll be each, and knee, then song. Now this is actually, you're making a cross, and then you're going to make an X. So you're covering all points of the compass. You want a uh, sheet. Go. Roku. Siege. And hatch. Okay, now, Mr. Scott has just went all uh, for the points. Now, we have to have this, anyone needs to continue to practice any type of kata motion or thing. So we want to start off one motion and end at one motion, uh, at one location. But the motion is, should be the same through the whole form. This is not a form per se, but it is a uh, directional exercise that eventually he'll start taking quicker. And I'm going to go ahead and let him go on his own. Now, I'm not going to count, but I'd like to, him to do it as fluidly as possible and cover all eight directions for me. And any at your time. Essence. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Okay, eventually as you get more into Aikido, there is a sword, a Bokken kata, wooden sword kata with that same direction. We call Hapo Gili, which is eight directional cut kata. But that's down the road and we'll get that in the in, in the future tapes. Um, what I'd like to go ahead now is start to go into the turning motions that we talked about. Stand up for me, please. Now, the turning motions develop into two different things. You start out with a motion we call Udafori Undo. Udafori Undo is just learning to swing the arms. Just, 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 just learning to swing the arms around and let the shoulders be loose. I'm going to let Mr. Scott just let that just get the freedom of them upper arms movement. Then I'm going to have him step his left leg back. Okay, now what he's going to go ahead and do, turn a little bit more side with the torso, uh, not so much that, just a little side there, thank you. What he's going to go ahead and do is he's going to step up with the back leg, which is his left, and watch what he's going to do here. Wrap the leg, step around, and here. Now I'm going to let him come back and forth across, and I hope the camera angle is good to see everything. See behind where he's putting his hand, you see? Right here. All right. Now, what we're going to do is turn this Udafor, uh, uh, the Udafori Undo, what this is now turned into is called something called Udafori Chuaku Undo. Udafori Chuaku Undo is lateral sway. Oh, not lateral sway. It's a turn, spinning motion, swinging the arms, all that together at once. So watch what he does real quickly. 
There he goes. That's nice. Getting fluid. Getting fluid. Okay. See how he's moving? Keeping the one. Keeping very open. All right. Now, Rudifori, the arm swinging. Rudifori, drew up window. The arm swinging with the step was what we just did. Pretty good warm up exercise in Aikido class. Now we're going to change that. Keep the step the same and call this next one Tenkan window. Turning exercise. Now watch how he starts off with this one. Starts with the left leg out. He's going to offer his hand out like we would in Aikido to, to, to practice grabs and doing our moves. And he's going to step his first move in just a simple around clockwise pivot. And then he starts stepping, replacing the hand every time he steps. Watch him do it a couple of times. There we go. I'm going to let him go. This is called Tenkan Undo. Turning exercise. Okay, very good. Very good. So there's some similarities. The reason we do this one first is because with this is that you might have movements, you open and slow. Right? You might have movements where we go like this and move. I'm not going to get into it all the throws today. I'm moving into movement. And then we have movement that might be like this. And then we take them from somewhere. So there is some different movement required on turning and different movement required on entering, it all depends whether you're going inside the circle or outside the circle. And inside the circle to me would be inside to here. And the outside would be outside here. So the movement requires whether you're going to go in front of the person and do a technique, come in front of the person and do a technique, you know, that type of thing, or you're going to go around the person and do a turn. You're going to do around the person Okay, you know, and do turning, lots of footwork turning. So with that, Aikido is a very motion-filled style, more short style. A lot of footwork in it, a lot of body movement. Reflexiveness is your best bet, okay? There are, the main ones I show, there's a, probably another dozen or two, but these are the ones we kind of do most of the time because they, with the wrist stretches, and then from there, I'd like to go ahead and just bring Mr. Scott right back over. Sit back down into Sesa. Okay. And then Mr. Scott will show you some. We're going to finish off with some of the body exercises that are not having movement into it. And then go from here and just show the stimulation in the muscles, shoulders, and everything. Okay. And then go from there, and then what we're going to do is set him into, he's already done some regular body stretches and all this, just kind of keep him, you know, and then he's going to sit still, okay, you do a little meditation to finish it off everything, or you could do what we call Fortana, the breathing exercise, coming up here, coming down, breathing, that's it, and shaking. Okay, and that this exercise brings you back to the source. It centers you. You notice it centers him. You can do it standing or sitting. Not too much more to offer on tape series that you don't already know with stretching exercises. All of the other stretching exercises are basic to a lot of martial arts. I just wanted to show you the things that were unique. And uh, we will see you next time. Take care. Okay, let's begin here with what we call etiquette. In any Budo training, the martial way of Japan, etiquette is very important in the whole growth of the martial arts training. No matter what martial art you do in Japan, whether it's Judo, Aikido, Karate, whatever that is, etiquette is very, very important. Honor is very, very important in Japanese martial arts, especially Aikido, being that it's, you're dealing with mutual cooperation and learning how to train and learn the techniques. So you have to be aware. If you cannot be aware to say yes sensei, no sensei, bow at the proper times, you're not aware. So we can't, why would we teach you a technique that's been handed down for the last 300 years that's lethal? Why would we do that? So let's make sure that etiquette's there, shows me clarity of mind, and we'll go from there. It's just polite. It's simply polite and safe to have etiquette. Etiquette in Aikido is very almost to the point sometimes of sacrimonious. It gets a little bit uh, confusing because we do normally have 
on a wall a picture of the founder, a scroll in Japanese that says Aikido, and then little flowers meaning that there's life living in this dojo, and then also other added situations. Boken and Joe on the bottom, symbolizing the Budo roots that Aikido has came from. And going from that, there's different ways to bow. When an Aikido student comes in, the first thing they're going to learn when it comes to etiquette is how to bow on and off the mat. And when any time they get on the mat, they have to face the front, which we call the showman, which means frontal area, the showman, and they have to bow before they get on the mat. So the hands to the side and bow, like any other martial art. When they get on the mat, they will line up, and I have my assistant, Mr. Scott Silver, come. I'm going to have you face you, but you being the showman. I'm going to guess you my assistant. You'll be the showman. So he's going to face you like you're the front wall of an Aikido school. So what's happening is he's sitting in Seiza, the typical, typical Japanese sitting position in martial arts. The feet, the knees are two to three widths apart, fist widths apart, toes are together back. Scott's got a relaxed shoulder here. His hands are casually on his lap, but ready. And his toes are together in the back. His butt is on his heels, and he's prepared. Now, this, this sitting position dictates discipline right off the bat. Just the way he's looking, keeping his posture straight, but keeping himself relaxed. Out of this position, the first thing he's going to learn is how to bow. Now, in Aikido, there's two ways that I've learned in Japan how to bow. Some schools teach you with both hands down. So Scott will come down in a triangle, both together, and bow at the waist up, and then he comes up. That's pretty much typical of most Aikido schools. I have been in some schools with a little bit older lineage that have bow like they're in combat, which is that they're symbolizing that there is a sword on the hip. So they will bow first with the left hand down, keep that right hand ready to draw that sword at any time, and then the right hand kind of looking a little bit more at who they're bowing to, and then they pick up the left and then the right. Okay, well, we're we gonna reverse that. Okay, as he comes down left, and then right, and then right, and then left, okay? We fixed that one. All right, now, the right is free to pull a blade. Now, in Aikido being a way of harmony, that kind of bowing symbolizes we're ready to do combat. We're not ready to do combat in Aikido, we're ready to defend ourselves in Aikido. There's a difference. There's a complete difference. The complete difference is, is that in combat, you would do techniques offensively to, to, to claim victory. In defense, Aikido, reflexive self-defense, you just want to get home. And you don't want them on you. And you'll do whatever you have to to get them off of you. As long as it's in the lines of Aikido. So with this, we need to go ahead and show you, this is the way you bow, this is the way you sit and say it. So he would be in a line. Okay? He would say, so Mr. Scott is the senior. I would come in, bow, as this instructor. I'll sit down in front. The showman wall will be here. And then Mr. Scott will be the senior. He will call out a saying called showman ni re, which means face the front part and bow. He'll say that. Showman ni re. And we bow. Come back up. And then I will turn around and face the group. As I turn around and face the group, the senior will then say, Sensei ni re, which means face the teacher and bow. Sensei ni re. And as we bow, everybody says, sensei. Which means please share or please teach us your knowledge. And as we do that, we just bowed in, and then we set up for warm up exercises, what have you. Now, we're not finished with editing. This is the entry coming into the mat. Leaving the mat, everything's the same, except at the end, all right, Shomani Ray, Sensei Ni Ray. At the end, they don't say Omegeshimas. At the end, they don't say please share, they thank us. They say at the end, Tomo Gazano Sensei. And then we bow. Which means a very formal, very formal, I, I can't tell you how much I, 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 I can thank you for this. Domo, Domo Arigato, Arigato. Kind of informal, thanks, thank you. But when you say Domo Arigato Gozaimashita, that means, thank you, God, thank you very much, thank you, thank you, thank you. Down here, thanking somebody. Very formal. When you say it in Japan, the Japanese kind of look at you kind of like, this guy's awful formal. 
You know, so sometimes, and then sometimes you don't know whether you're not saying enough. You say, all right, got to, and you get a Japanese master look at you and go, hmm. So I figured I'd breached an etiquette thing somewhere. So it's very important, especially if you, and on Dojo TV people, let me tell you, it's very important. If you're going to train overseas and you don't have this stuff down, you will ostracize. You'll never walk into a dojo. Because etiquette is, is very formal. How you present yourself if you walk into a dojo in Japan is going to be what you get from an instructor. If you're rude, you'll get nothing. If you're very, not brown nosy, but very polite, very etiquette, they feel that you're very attentive, they'll show you. The masters will unleash some stuff. You'll be thankful just for a good thank you here and there. The technique you'll gain. All right, now we're going to stand up. Now we're going to show you some etiquette when we pair off. Now we, we pair off, we can either, if, you know, standing, okay, and then we do our, our thing, or maybe, let's say, so, huh? Hey, and we're getting ready to work off, we just, Sensei has just broke us up for class, and Scott's my partner, so we look at, I want to get some us. I get some us. And then we have fun and train serious, okay? Very important, don't go into working out with somebody like, just come up here, hey, Scott, come on, Scott, okay, no, 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 not in a formal IQ class. At the end, I do like people, uh, when they break up and, and bow out, they like to come up, thank you very much, it's excellent, excellent class. I do like that, okay? So, that is not etiquette, it's, it is etiquette, it's being polite, it's being kind, it's being, uh, you know, communicating with someone. You need to make sure that that is aware of, through everyone in that dojo. Or someone that doesn't have it, can put a cancer in the dojo big time. You get one rude person in the dojo, you can feel it. You need to see the guy. It's like a dirt on a white wall. You notice it. So you need to make sure that this is very much important. If you guys just want to get into techniques, that's fine. But if you want to get into the formalities of traditional Budo, Aikido per se, then you must have this, what we call Reiki etiquette down. And never forget it. There's the other thing I want to talk about what we call Kohai Senpai situation. Now, we don't want to get too crazy with that because in the West, it's Kohai means junior, Senpai means senior. And in, in, in the Asian martial arts, especially the Japanese martial arts, that, that senior-junior relationship is very important that you respect your seniors without question. That's very hard for Americans to do. We question everything, which we should. But in, 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 we talk about democracy compared to autocracy. Japanese is an autocracy situation. That means they follow the leader. And they have no problem doing that. We always have to have a question. So with the etiquette, it gives us a common ground to know, you know, at this point in time, if I have anything to say to this guy, I gotta say it. I've got a bad shoulder, don't throw me so hard. You know, whatever. This is the kind to communicate. Once you've done this, and then you've said nothing, you better be ready to train Buddha. Or get off the mat. Don't come in hurt. Don't complain about pain here and here. That's bad etiquette to come in and train, complain about pain, not tell somebody about it, and then complain that they hurt you, or come in with pain, not tell somebody about it, or say, I'm okay, let me go ahead. Because this person can't train full tilt now. That's a part of etiquette. It ain't about you. It's not about what you're doing with it, it's about learning the art. And, and Aikido, it's a mutual cooperation art. You need to have your partner with you on this or you're not going to be able to pick up the techniques. So with the etiquette, make sure you're clear-headed, everything knows, we know everything, all right? And then policy and dojos dictate different things. You could have a different way to deal with this sensei in another dojo and another different way in another dojo. My dojo, I pretty much like the sensei student relationship. I pretty much like the Kohai Senpai Junior Senior relationship and I certainly like the manners. When in doubt, bow. When should I bow? I'm bowing if you don't bow. I'll tell you whether you're playing Alibaba or not if you bow too much. Alright? When in doubt, bow. They'll tell you. And then when you ask, and there's another thing in etiquette, in Japanese etiquette. What would you think if I said to Mr. Scott, Mr. Scott just did a fantastic technique and I went up to Mr. Scott and Etiquette-wise, I said, Mr. Scott, it's fantastic technique. It's fantastic. Going good. What would you say to that compliment? Mr. Scott, what would you say normally to that compliment? Aikido class. 
I apologize for my inadequate technique, Sensei. I'll try harder to master the technique. I complimented it. What happened was, is that when I was in Japan, one of the masters told me, you're doing great, you're fantastic, you're doing right up to par for a foreign correspondent. And I said, thank you very much. One more I got to Kazama today, thank you very much. And I got tapped on the back by an American that knew better, that had been in Japan and said, don't thank him. Just say, nah, sensei, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. You humble pie it. And try to be, mean it, okay? Because they don't compliment you to go ahead and make you boost your ego. We don't, they don't need to do that over there. They, we have to do it here. They compliment you just to give you guidance to say you're on the right path. And that's all it is. That's all it is. It's not like, I feel great now. It's like, okay, I'm on the right line. Good, I can get serious into more training. Sensei says I'm doing the right, down the right road. See the difference? Manners also. I give a gift in Aikido. I give a gift. In America, you give a gift. And I know I'm getting into a little bit of cultural things here, but this is stuff I've ran into etiquette-wise in Aikido, dealing with the Aikido. If I give Mr. Scott a gift in America, what would he do with that gift? He would open it, because I gave it to him. Oh, thank you. And he opens the gift. In Japan, I gave a gift. The first time I went to Japan, I gave a gift. And he set it aside. And let me tell you why. The gift isn't more important than you. I didn't get that. Well, I was like, they look at you, the person. It's more polite. It's polite to acknowledge a human living being than this inanimate object that is materialistic. So if you go, thank you, thank you, and you're looking, what's that show the person it gives you? In the West, we don't, we, that doesn't matter. But in Japan, if you were to do that, it would be a complete insult. Completely insulting them. Put it to the side, talk to the person that gave it to you, thank you, it was unnecessary, so what's going on? And then as you're talking, then you unwrap it. Never do it. These are little things that, you can, that we take for granted here. They're all part of the martial arts training at Aikido. All right? So with this, remember bowing, never enough. Yes, sensei, no sensei. If you want to do use the Japanese, it's high sensei, ie sensei, whatever. Don't get too much of a Jap Japanophile. I'll call it Japanophiles of people who are more Japanese than the Japanese are. Don't get too much in that. We are still Americans or we're foreigners or whatever. We still need to deal with our own language, understand the arts in our own language. But it helps in Aikido to get into the culture, the etiquette, and the, uh, the language of it. It just helps. So what I'd like to go ahead and finish off with here on the etiquette situation, and then we'll get into other things, is I'd like to go ahead and finish off with simply a bow out. And a bow out will simply be us facing you as the showman. And we sit down, all right? And then he calls it. Showman, hey! Sensei, hey! Tomo ga to gizana, sensei! Okay, now, he'll stay down low until I get off the mat. I walk off the mat. I don't know if you can see me, but say this is off the mat. If I walk off the mat, I turn around, face the showman, and bow, and walk off the mat. He doesn't get up until I leave. Why all that? Does it look like slave labor? No, it's just a matter of, if you're going to train this as disciple under a sensei in the bad Japanese Budo, martial ways, the Aikido, you're going to train mind and body. He's an educator in every facet of your life. Manners is definitely part of your life. Learn them, you learn them well, your training in Budo and Aikido will be painless mentally. We'll see you next time. Okay, with the bows, you know, like we have the two different ways. And one way is like you're in combat that I've seen in several different dojos. And that is when he bows, he bows down with the left hand first. Right hand pauses in case he has to draw his, draw his sword. It's symbolization here. Symbolizing drawing the sword. He puts that down. 
And he bows that right that hand down, and he bows, and then he releases the right hand first in case he gets ready for the sword, and then he takes the other hand up. I've seen that in a lot of dojos uh, with older lineage. With the most, more modern Aikido dojos, humble dojo, things like I've seen mainly this, together in harmony. The triangle goes down, he bows together, both hands together, bows low with eyes down, comes up, and puts hands back on the lap. And there are two distinct ways that I've seen uh, bowing in Aikido dojos across the country and, and, and across the world. Okay, cool. Good. And then if I get just one more where you just do the bow, just kind of a uh, moderate pace, just so I can piece it together. You just need something. him to do yeah. that? Yeah, you could just stand there as if you were talking. Okay. And the uh, traditional or the the, uh, the old one, the old style. The left hand first. Now remember, I'm usually 60 an hour for this, so. Right. Here's the deal. I think it works with guys different than the karate. Hey, guys, Mr. Scott and me are both yeah, yeah, ready to this. It's not that. So it's a different thing. So let's take, give you an example so you guys understand. Okay, okay, I'm just supposed to punch at you. I'm just about to go to. I will punch at you. Stand up on your foot. So you understand where we're coming from here. If I do it just, I'm not going to go fast, but just say, what were you talking to do? If I throw a jack punch at you, do a gojo uh, just slow, but what do you do against the punch of your face? Alright? Yeah. Okay, we'll do it. Right there. We'll do whatever you wish. Boom, and then what else? Okay, now see how this times look here? That's mm -hmm. time. Now, unless you, unless you are conditioned, that would eventually hurt after a while. Okay, so that did you mean, right? Mm -hmm. So if you block this here, and I'm coming, how much you left? I'm 220, how much you mean? circles, huh? Mm -hmm. I try to avoid things. I don't try to block things. So even with a punch, I don't do this. I slip it. Okay? I slip it. And he did that to himself. So instead of this happening, I arced it. So it kind of like he's walking up a wall. 
Wow. And you always avoid it. And you want to avoid, you want to avoid the uh, bull's horns, huh? Yeah. And you first just keep punching out. And you want to avoid the bull's horns, you know? It's avoid the bull's horns. That's how I Avoid the bull's horns. And what I did there was, he came here. Now he could punch me there. Ah, it's good. Uh, this punch just threw him. So there's no count for him. He's going to throw himself down. Kickers, are they a problem? Not at all. Front kick. Yes. Now I'm stepping on the femur. I don't think he's kicking with that one. And now we're going to go ahead and guillotine the ankle. Wow. If I really want to hate hurting the groin, here. Now he ain't kicking nothing. Okay. This is when he gets snapped. Okay? It's a roundhouse kick. Can you pull out of that, Scott? Wow. When he taps, that means he gives up. Okay? And any other kicks are easier after that. Spinning kicks, you see him come. Kicking's not a problem. Kick of the punch. Yes, it hurt. As a matter of getting control, I got him. Where the heck? Chugger. You can fight me out of it, but I'll just rip it out. And I'll let him go. You notice I'm not killing you down there? Mm -hmm. What's hard, guys? Or this? What's hard? Now, here's the point. Mm -hmm. does damage, or face here, gravity, or what's going to do more? And I don't feel guilty about it. That did. I did. <laughs> See enough? No. No? Well, let me take you some. Come on in. This is God that's going to help you. See? Bow. Let me get you Let me get you all right, stand up. This is what I want you to do. I want you to do, he's going to punch at you. Huh? Do that for me. Okay, sweat your face, wipe it off. That's your block. Give me that. Just give me that part. Wrong way. Outside the arm. Yep. Now you got to turn around. Your left hand's got to turn around and grab his hand. That's it. I want you to turn all the way around and face the same way he's facing. Yes. That's it. Now give me that point. Just give me that point right there. Don't do anything else. Just give me that point. Not two hands, just the one hand. Give me that point. That's it. Now, you got it. Lift this hand up. Your thumb has to be there. Lift this hand up. You're going to move this leg out of the way backwards. At the same time you do that, don't do it yet. At the same time you do that, you're going to pump it and turn, throw him that way. Okay? You can't throw him into the wall. All right? Now try the whole move. Oh, yeah. Try the whole move. Because we're only going to give you this lesson for so long. You're using two hands. I told you not to use two hands. I'm getting, like, okay. after this and the all the way around. And lead all around. And now do it. Now bring the hand up. Put the other hand. Wait by. Wait by. Wait by. Wait by. You're just going to fold in and step that leg out of the way. <laughs> now do it fast. Yeah. Wow. No, keep so on going. See, that's not easy. The, the so hands are not easy. Way. Yep. Now Two. throw. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Thank you very much. Come right now, out. You will thank him. Say, don't worry about the Gazama stuff. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. And then shake hands and that's it. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Scott, would you bow with me one more time? Hey. You guys can back there. Go ahead.
Do you want me to hold that a little longer? Yeah, no, it's actually good. It's fun. It's like you were on a, like you were getting ready to draw your sword. <laughs>